Hello and welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Today we'll be making balanced microphone preamp. And why am I talking like this? I don't know. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Now, I know it's been like 50,000 million years since my previous video. And this is also the, probably the 512th take. But anyway, I hope I get this all right this time. So, in today's video, I'm going to build a balanced microphone preamp circuit. Now, you might remember this microphone from several videos ago. I forget how long ago it was I got this. But when I got this microphone, I found out that it has an XLR connection on it. And this is wired up correctly. We've got a ground here and the two signal pins here. The plug on the other hand was not. This just had an ordinary unbalanced cable. So the hot pin was going to the signal wire and the ground and the cold were connected together and then they were going to the ground conductor so what I did, I wanted to take advantage of the balanced audio so I got another wire or an another cable rather I wired this up correctly so we now have a proper balanced connection with separate ground, hot and cold so what I want to do is build a balanced microphone preamp so I can take the balanced audio from this microphone, amplify it, and then feed it into something that doesn't have balanced audio, such as this tape recorder here. Now before I forget, let's just take you on a guided tour of the setup. This is the microphone, on this very primitive looking stand that I've made. And this is the breadboard where I'm going to be building up various circuits and testing them. And the output of those circuits is going to go into this tape deck I've got. And the good thing about this is that this has got variable level input. So I can go all the way from microphone level all the way up to line level. So I'll be able to compensate for the different output levels of each circuit. And finally, the output of this is going into the mini disc. So we'll be able to hear directly how each microphone preamp sounds. Now if you're wondering about this weird contraption, this is so we can see any waveforms. So I've got another camera here, and then I've got this box in front of my oscilloscope screen. And there's absolutely nothing in that box, just a hole at one end. But this way we'll be able to see any waveforms nice and clearly. Another problem I've had is sensitivity. Now, I've got the microphone connected directly into this tape deck and I'm just using the breadboard to connect it. I've connected the hot, I mean, I've connected the ground and the cold together and they're connected to the tape recorder's ground and the hot wire from the microphone is just connected to the tape recorder's signal input. And even though I've got all the levels turned right up so I've got this set to microphone level, and I've got the levels turned all the way up. As you might be able to see, when I speak, the VU meters barely even move. Even though the microphone isn't that far away, as you can see. I'm only about between one or two feet away from the microphone, and it's barely doing anything. Okay, we're now hearing from the microphone. And as you can hear, you can barely hear a single word I'm saying. So, I have to practically stick the microphone in my gob so you can actually hear what I'm saying. Now, it should be coming out pretty good. I can see the level meters moving whenever I'm saying anything, so I know like this it is picking up, but I have to speak pretty close up to the microphone, and, well, at this distance my voice probably sounds really terrible and it's probably picking up a lot of other unpleasant sounds from my mouth as well. That was a real mouthful to say. 
But of course that kind of defeats the idea of using balanced audio. So my next idea is to get a little audio transformer and feed the hot and cold outputs from the microphone into one side of the transformer and connect the tape recorder to the other side of the transformer. So we've got balanced audio going into one side and unbalanced audio coming out the other side. Mini disc is recording! Well, it appears this isn't going too well. Now, I've really got to practically cram the microphone inside my mouth in order for you to be able to hear me, because the signal's not getting through too well. It's also sounding a little bit tinny, and I'm sure you can hear we've got a ton of hum in the background, so... Using a transformer isn't the best idea. So let's use something else. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, aliens from other planets, let me present to you the world's simplest microphone preamp. It is only made out of an op amp and two resistors. All right then. So this is the preamp using an op amp. And as you can hear, this is working. And I'm actually standing maybe a foot and a bit away from the microphone, which is, you know, the distance that you would usually use a microphone at. So this time I can speak and it's picking up. As you can see, the meters are moving nice and good. And we've got some pretty good amplification there. I've got this almost turned all the way up to line level. And as you can probably hear, it is working pretty good. The only trouble is there is a little bit of background noise as you can hear. It's a little bit hissy, but there is no hum. As a matter of fact, I'm going to unplug the microphone's ground. And even though I've disconnected the ground wire, there is no more hum than there was before. So I thought, what about Try the transformer again, but this time, let's amplify the signal from the microphone before it gets into the transformer. So I've made up this little circuit here. Now in the schematic I've shown a capacitor connected in series with the transformer. Just to keep any DC out of the transformer, just in case one side has more voltage than the other. Although I found it's really not necessary, it's really not that bad. So that's not here on this little thing that I've built up on the breadboard. But this is one advantage over the op-amp circuit, and that is that the impedance of the microphone does not affect the gain. So, let's hear how this sounds. Okay, so this is a test of the preamp that first amplifies the microphone and then sends it into this transformer. So we have an amplified, balanced signal going into this transformer, and although we've got amplification, it's not as much amplification as we got with the previous circuit. If you look at the input level, I've had to turn that up quite considerably, but not all the way, as I would have if I just connected the microphone directly to it. So, we do have amplification. Unfortunately, the sound is very tinny. So, I think using a circuit like this is really just not going to work. Okay, I have now changed that transformer for an integrated circuit. And this thing is ridiculously sensitive now. I mean, this thing is so sensitive that you could hear a gnat fart from across the room. So, let's hear how this sounds. So, here's the preamp using a kind of a differential amplifier. It's not a proper differential amplifier, but it's, um... We are going to experiment with differential amplifiers in a minute. But, as you can probably tell, this is working pretty good. There was a little bit of harm in the previous circuit, which I didn't know it was there. I think it was the transformer picking that up, but... This one is nice and free of hum. And it's got plenty of amplification. I mean, I've had to turn the levels on this down quite a bit. So this is all the way on line level. And I've got the inputs on... Actually, I've got the inputs on about 7, which is about normal for mixing levels. So, actually, that's um just about right. Alrighty then. So I've made a little differential circuit, as you can see here. 
which we're going to do some experiments with. Now the way it works in this particular configuration is it's a bit like a seesaw or a teeter-totter. When one side goes down, the other side will go up and vice versa. And even if you're just moving one side, the other side will still move in the opposite direction. Now in order for this circuit to work, it must be powered from a split supply. So, got your positive here, and then your zero volts, which is also the ground, and then negative. And to bias the transistors, I just connected a 3.3k resistor from each transistor's base to ground. It's not absolutely critical, the value of those resistors, just as long as they're both the same. I mean, you could go all the way up to 10k and it will still work. So, let's turn this on and see if it works. Now, you'll have to excuse the flicker of the scope view. It's because I've got it on a very slow time base at the moment, but... So I've got a little resistor here, and I'm just going to touch one of the transistor's bases with this. And you can see that even though I'm only putting a signal into one transistor, you can see we've got opposing waveforms. Now this particular configuration isn't completely perfect, but you can see what's going on there. So now I'm going to grab my microphone, I'm going to hook this into the thing, I'm not even going to bother with the ground connection, because who needs it? So, one side of the voice coil is going to go to this base, and the other side of the voice coil is going to go to this base. If I speak into the microphone, you can see it's picking that up pretty good. Let's just turn it onto a bit of a higher time base, so we can... So we can see this a lot better. So, as you might be able to see, when I speak, we get two waveforms on the scope. And you might be able to see that both the waveforms are the complete mirror of each other. But... Yeah, you can sort of see it there. So now, I'm going to do another little experiment. Right, so, I'm going to disconnect the microphone. And I'm only going to feed it into one side of the circuit. So, I'll just connect a capacitor here to this transistor's base. Because if I don't do that, we're going to have an imbalance in the circuit when I connect the microphone up. Okay, and I'm going to connect the microphone's ground and cold to the circuit's ground, which is on this little bit there. Connect the microphone to the other side of the capacitor. I'll have to turn up the scope's gain a little bit because we don't get as much gain this way. And now I'll speak into the microphone again. And again, you can see that when I speak into it, even though I'm only feeding one side of the circuit, you can see that we still get the opposing waveforms. And I'll just be a signal generator again. But... Yeah, you can see that works pretty good. But I know what you're all asking me. How well does this work as a microphone preamp? Well, here it is. You're listening to it right now. Got the little differential amplifier I made. Connected up to the tape recorder. And, well, we do have some amplification. There isn't much amplification. You might have noticed I've had to turn the levels up quite a bit and it's a little bit hissy. Anyway, this isn't where I'm stopping because I'm going to do some more experiments with this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a current mirror. So this resistor in the long tail part of the circuit will be replaced with a current mirror. And let's see what that does. Okay, so here we are with the current mirror in the circuit. Anyway, I just want to make sure that nothing's getting hot. Because in the past, I've run into situations with this kind of circuit where one of the transistors gets a little bit disconnected, so the other transistor turns all the way fully on and lets a huge amount of current flow. That's kind of bad when that happens. But at least right now it's behaving itself. Anyway, what we're going to do now is instead of having a current mirror at the bottom of the circuit, or the long tail part of the circuit, or whatever you want to call it, let's put it in 
the positive part of the circuit. Alrighty then, we now have a current mirror in the positive part of the circuit. And you might have noticed that I've had to turn the input level down quite considerably because like this we get a lot more amplification. There is still a little tiny bit of hiss as you can probably hear if you're listening through headphones. But anyway, let's just make one final little change to the circuit. Alright, I've gone out of my way and now we have both current mirrors in the circuit. I want to use the differential amplifier circuit as the input stage for my microphone preamp. So I'm going to go back to the circuit that didn't use any current mirrors and didn't have much amplification. But when I connect that up to an op amp, it should sound nice and good. So that's what I'm going to do now. OK, then, um, this is my final design. Well, maybe not my final design. But anyway, we've got the differential amplifier now connected up to an op amp, which is also configured as a differential amplifier. And this does seem to work rather well. Now, I have a little confession to make here. And that is, when I built up this circuit and I scoped at the op amp's inputs, I thought the circuit wasn't working because both the waveforms were in phase as you saw just now. And it wasn't until I asked around and got some helpful advice, thanks for that by the way, that I realised that there was one problem, and that problem was Clement Sagas. Because he'd forgotten a very simple thing, which is that op amps will try to make both their inputs the same. So the circuit was actually working and I didn't even know. That's crazy. So I'm scoping the non-inverting and the inverting inputs at the op amp. And as you can see, even though the differential amplifier that I made gives differential output, you can see that the inputs at the op amp are in fact in phase. But that's perfectly okay, it's supposed to do that. So let's just disconnect the op amp. I mean, let's just disconnect the scope from the op amp. Also, let's just disconnect the op amp from the circuit so we can scope the output of the differential amplifier. So now you can see that the output from the differential amplifier is indeed producing opposing waveforms. So we've got one of them 180 degrees out of phase, as you can see. Now I've turned the brightness up on the scope so hopefully it's not going to look horrible and flickery like it did last time. Anyway, let's go and hear how this sounds. Here it is, and as you can hear, it does sound pretty good, as you can hear. Now I do know the op amp is working properly and doing its thing, because if I disconnect the non-inverting input to the op amp, and you might be able to hear it's gotten a little bit hissy. It's not quite as loud. Now I'm going to disconnect the inverting input. And the signal. And the signal completely goes, so I have to speak really up close to the microphone so you can even hear any words I'm saying. <clears throat> but with both resistors in, we've got good gain, good sound quality. Although, personally, I think that first circuit that I came up with, that sort of had a differential amplifier, but not quite, actually worked a lot better than this one did. So this one, to me, sounds just a little bit distorted. I don't know if that's because of my horrible voice, or if it really does sound that way. But anyway, I'm going to go back to that circuit, but take it one step further. And then I'm going to call it a day. I think I've just gone and made the world's most sensitive preamp. I've got to make this quick because I've only got about six minutes left on my memory card. So I've got to make this quick.
Anyway, while browsing the internet, I came across this circuit here that uses a couple of compound pairs of transistors. We got one compound pair here, another compound pair here, in a differential configuration, feeding an op amp that's in a differential configuration as well. If you're wondering what a compound pair of transistors is, well, it's this configuration here. Anyway, I decided to make an input stage just like the one on this circuit here that I designed, but using a compound pair of transistors instead. And I must say, it does work pretty well. I'm standing about two feet away from the microphone, and you can see the meters are responding pretty well. So in the circuit here, I've got one compound pair feeding the inverting input, and this compound pair is feeding the non-inverting input. But between the non-inverting input and the ground, there is also this potentiometer. And what that's for is to adjust the common mode rejection ratio. So if I pull out the microphone's ground, I touch the microphone's ground, let's adjust the common mode rejection ratio. I've got this set to the midpoint at the moment. If I touch the microphone's ground to try to induce hum into the system, if I turn it, turn the potentiometer this way, you can hear the hum increases. Turn it more towards the middle, the hum diminishes. Turn it even further, and we get some more hum. So we put this to the point where the hum goes away, or most of it goes away. We cannot get rid of all of it, but we can get rid of most of it. There you go. Plug the microphone back in. Sounds good. There's no hum. It's very sensitive. And I think I'm going to call it a day for this video. Because running out of space on the memory card, I've got a whole boatload of editing to do. So, in the next video, I'll be back with some better transistors, some metal film resistors, and also this chip here, which I've discovered, and we'll see how well that works. Also, I'll build up this amplifier as well. It would help if it was in the right, right way up. Anyway, that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye. If I could just move my camera, so it's at a more acceptable angle. <coughs> no, I'm not doing family guy impressions, I'm just trying to clear my throat because I clear my throat, or rather I clear my chest, and five seconds later it's already gunked up with scunge again. So <coughs> I'm just doing that. <coughs> Stupid throat. No, sorry, it's a bit Sorry about all the flick here, there's not much. Oh, saga wugga wugga dugga wugga dugga. So, I think using an audio transformer really isn't the best. Ah. Alright, this is gonna be track 50 on the mini disc.